Hey guys, welcome to Cheeky Studios. My name is Carolina Osa. Thank you so much for joining in on episode number five of my live stream tutorials. Um, today we're going to be creating a double macrame plant hanger using macrame cord found at Michael's or Joann's. Um, I don't know if you can find these at any other stores, but you can definitely check out at your um, local craft store. Before we get started on the project itself, just like every other week, I just want to quickly run through the, the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I know I talk about these every week, but I just want to make sure that anybody that's new to the tutorial or just to macrame in general can feel super ready to go once um, they're ready to start knotting. So first is a rolling rack and hooks. Both of these are from Ikea. Um, this one is great because it adjusts up and down. So you can um, uh, work with your projects. Also, I use a yardstick. I get this at Home Depot. Um, then next is a uh, tape. I use brown tape, or you can use any type of tape. Super essential when you are um, cutting each cord. You definitely need to wrap each tip with um, tape just to prevent it from unraveling. Because of the cord that we're using tonight, it's not really necessary to tape them just because they don't really unravel. Um, once you cut it, that's kind of like where they stay. And then last but not least, a good pair of scissors. I got these on Amazon, but I believe I saw them at Michael's the other day. Um, the silver version of them. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Let me see if I can. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Okay, I'm going to try and see. I think this is kind of like a little bit behind, so I won't know until you guys get there. So let me know if you um, have any more trouble with the volume. Um, so, on to the materials that we're going to be using to create um, this plant hanger. First, we're going to be using a ring. Um, I'm using a metal ring, but you can use anything else. It can be wood. Um, just make sure it's something big enough so that we can wrap um, the ring. And so you can also put your, your cords on it to start creating the plant hanger. Then also um, a wooden bead. You can use um, any type of bead. Um, you can do color or you can also buy natural ones and paint these as well to any color that you'd like. Um, and then I'm also using, I also bought cord at Michael's. This is called Bee Landing. I don't know if this is the same one they have at Joann's, but it's a spool of 50 yards. We won't be using the whole entire spool. Um, so you'll definitely have leftover to create um, another project. So um, the cords that we're going to be cutting for this project is uh, one cord measuring a yard and a half, then two cords measuring one yard each, and then we're also going to be cutting six yards measuring six yards each. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to create, um, we're going to wrap the hook just like this. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to grab our hook and I'm going to place it right here. This is easier when you do it um, sitting down on your lap just for like video purposes. Um, I'm just doing it this way, but I think it's super easy on um, the other way. Then we're going to grab the cord measuring one yard and a half. So we're going to fold it, but not in half. So what we're going to do is that we're going to leave um, five fingers on one side. And then the rest of the, of the yard and a half, we're going to we're going to leave in the other side. So the short length is going to be on the left. And then the longer one is going to be in the right. So the way we're going to start off is that we're going to place it in front just 
like we do when, just like we learned in previous episodes, uh, this is called a lark set. It's the way that we we attach the cords to the rod when creating a um, a wall hanging. So this is the same technique that we'll be doing today. So we put it in front of your ring with the loop facing down. We're gonna go over the ring and then we're gonna loop the strings in here. And then we're gonna loop it just like this. So then just like this. So the left cord, now we're not gonna do anything with it. We're just gonna be moving with the right cord. So we're gonna go all the way down and we're gonna hold the tip of the cord. It's super easy, it's much easier working um, if you go all the way down to the end of the cord, that way you're not pulling and trying to like look for the cord. So then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna grab the tip, we're gonna move through the back, and then we're gonna loop it in the loop that we formed, just like that. And then we're gonna pull it and tighten it, just like this. So again, we're gonna we're never gonna let go of the cord. So you just go through the back, and then oops we loop it through just like this and then we tighten it so we're going to create kind of like um these little knots right here so then we keep on going all the way until we reach the other end so once again we go through the back and then we just loop it in just like this loop it in. So you want to make sure that you tighten it just so they're nice and tight. So we loop it in, so through the back, and then loop. So we're going to do this until we reach um, this side. So through the back, and then loop. Once again, through the back, and loop all the way so you can notice here that the cord is starting to like move in like this we'll just adjust it once the once um the ring is completed then um it'll be a little bit more sturdy and you'll be able to maneuver it a little bit better so it can be um straight so through the back and then loop and tighten just like this through the back, loop. So keep going. Back, loop, tighten. Through the back, do the loop, and then tighten. So I think we're halfway there. So through the back, loop, and tighten. Okay, there we go, halfway. A couple of more knots left. Through the back, loop, and then we tighten. So once we're done, I'll show you, I'll move it a little bit closer to the camera so you guys can oh, see better. Sorry, this is why I say it's easier to do it um, on your lap. So keep going. through the loop and then tighten. Back through the loop and then tighten. Back through the loop, tighten. So we're almost there. Keep 
fit maybe like two more, maybe just one more. I'll do one more. So through the back, loop, and then tiny. So now you see how it doesn't curl around anymore. You just fix it a little bit. And then here we have our ring. So this is how it looks through the back, the same way that it looks in the front, it looks in the back. It's just that in the back you'll see that these are coming out. So afterwards we're just going to cut these later on. But this is our ring. So, let me move this out of the way, I'll sample. So the next step that we will be creating is um, so now we're going to place our hook ring on the hook then we're going to grab our, our cords measuring 6 yards and now we're going to do it again we're going to do kind of like a large step to attach it to the rope so we're going to fold each rope in half when we reach the middle, we're going to place it in front, then through, over the ring, and then through the loop. So exactly step one that we did in the, um, for the ring is exactly what we'll be doing to attach these cords, all six of them. So we fold them in half. all the way to the middle I'm going to loop it and so this is two then three Fold in half, in front, over, and through the loop. So wherever we left off with these, with these two leftover strings from the from the wrapping of the ring is where the middle is. So one side would be the middle and then we go left and then the other side is the middle and then we go right. So we want the leftover strings to be right behind um, where we're looping these cords just so we can cut them later and then it'll just hide them. So over. Loop. This is four, and then two more. Fold in half. Place in front, over, and then loop through. Just like this. And then one more. So now we have all six knots on the hook, just like this. So now we're going, the next knot that we're going to be doing is a half clove hitch. So a diagonal, sorry, a diagonal clove hitch. So we're going to be using the first three cords, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, to create the first line, and then the second half will create another line. So it's, we're kind of doing like a V. So we'll do two lines on this side and then two lines on the opposite side. So we're going to grab, since we're going from left to right to create the first um, diagonal clove hitch, we're going to use 
the chord all the way to the left as our bass chord. So then we're going to place it diagonal like this. So this is kind of like our steering wheel. This is this is showing us where um, where the knots are going to go. So if we want them diagonal, we have to place it diagonal. If we want it straight, we have to place the chord straight. So then the trick here is to grab the bass chord with your right hand, and you're not going to move it. And then we're now we're going to grab the first working chord with our left hand. So we're going to bass chord with our right and working chord with our left. So just like we did it with the ring, we're going to go all the way to the tip. We're going to hold this like this. And then it's going to go over the bass chord. So the first chord is going to go over the bass chord. We're going to move it all the way to the top. And then with the same chord, it's going to go over the bass chord again and then through the loop that you're creating from the first knot and then the second one. So this is one. So we're going to go again. Now the second chord. We're going to grab the second chord. We're going to grab all the way to the tip. We're going to place this diagonal. It's going to go over the bass chord. Then we're going to tighten it. And then with the same chord, we're going to place it over the bass chord again and then through the loop that we've created. So the trick here to um, tightening it is just to hold the string from back here so it can be a little bit tighter. So then we'll do it again. Now with the next chord, we're going to go all the way to the tip with the left hand we're going to grab the bass chord with the right hand we're going to grab the bass chord and then with the left I'm holding the tip of the working chord so it's going to go over the bass then we're going to pull it all the way until it touches the other knot and then we're, with the same chord it's going to go over the bass and then through the loop so let's make sure that we keep that when we're pulling it we keep this kind of like same donut and we don't do um, and we don't knot it like this because if you knot it in a different way then you'll lose this kind of little donut shape so you always want to kind of be careful and do it slowly at the beginning until you get the hang of it so now we have two more chords left so then we grab the tip of the next one over the bass chord. We pull it until we reach the knot. And we pull through the back. And now again with the same one over the bass chord through the loop. And then you see how I'm pulling it from the back to make sure that it's tight and close to the knot previous to the one we did right now. So then this is the last knot. You see, we already did one, two, three. This is the middle. So this is the last knot to create this, this line. So we go all the way to the tip again, over the base. We pull all the way. Then we're going to pull back to tighten it. Then again with the same cord over the base. And we pull it through the loop. And then through the back, just like this. So now, the good thing about macrame is that you can kind of move the knots and adjust them to make them a little bit more straight. So we're done with the first side of, let's say, of the V. So we're going to create a second line. So now, this the base chord that we were using before now becomes a working chord. And now we're going to use the one all the way to the left to create the second line. So this one that was our first working chord is going to become our bass chord. So we're going to place it like this, right underneath um, the other knot. And now we go again all the way to the tip. We're going to grab the next chord over. It's going to go over and now. So that these can be tight and close together, we're going to do the same thing. 
We're going to hold it from the back and pull it, then with the same one, over the base and through the loop. And then we tighten it just like this. And now we've created our first little donut. So now we go again all the way over. We pull it, we pull through the back to tighten it. Then with the same one over the base, I pull it again all the way to the end. And then I pull it through the back to make it tight. Now the next one, all the way to the tip, over the base, I pull it, pull the back to make it tight with the same one over the base, through the loop, and then I pull it through the back, just so it can be nice and tight. Now two more, tip over the base, and then over the base through the loop, and then tighten, just like this. And then one more, grab the tip, and you go over the base, pull it, and then you pull all the way back. Then with the same one over the base. And there we go. Now we have our first side. So now we're going to go with the next side. So we're going to be doing a V this way now. So this line, since we're going from right to left, now the one all the way to the right is going to be our base cord and then so now we grab the base with our left cord and then we move the working cord with our right hand so now we go all the way to the tip the exact same way that we did this side we're going to go do this side so over we pull pull back to set it in place and now again, over, so remember you're doing two knots per, um, per string. So then if you have five strings, you're going to end up with 10 knots. So now the next one. Make sure you keep the donut shape, and then again, over, then you pull it. Want to make sure that this time it's tighter to the top, that way um, they have the same shape. So once again, now we're going to grab the one all the way to the right, and it's going to be your, your new base cord, and then now we start with the next one over. So once again, over, through the loop. Tighten, over, through the loop, and tighten. All the way to the tip. You don't necessarily have to go all the way to the end of the cord, but I've just found, personally for me, that it's easier to um, manage the rope this way. Over through the loop, over, through the loop. Now the next cord, over the base, we pull, and then over through the loop, and then pull back. And then this is the last one. So we go all the way to the end, over, and we pull all the way, pull back, and then with the same cord over, and then through the loop. Just like this. So now, 
The next knot that we're going to do is that we're going to do a square knot right here in the middle to um, so that these two sections can come together. So I'm going to use the middle cords as my base cords and then the one to the left to this one and the one to the right from this one as your working cords. So then we do the four over through the back and then loop and then I'll just move all the way up. This is where I use my base cords so that it can move up and then now we go the opposite way reverse four over through the back and then through the loop. There we go. So now I'm going to pull the cords in the middle just so they can be fully the square now can be like completely to the top just like this. So now I'm going to grab my bead my bead and then I'm going to grab the two cords that are in the middle and then I'm going to place the ones that we use as the base cords for the square knot, we're just going to put the bead right in there. And we're going to move it all the way up, just like this. So now we're going to create another square knot just to hold the bead in place. So we'll do another four. The right goes over, through the back, and then through the loop. And then we'll tighten it until the bead is in place. And now we'll go reverse. Reverse four. The left goes over the right working cord, through the back, and then through the loop. Just like this. So now, the same knots that we created up here, the diagonal clove hitch, is the same ones that we'll create down here. So what we're really creating is an X. So an X and then an X. Just like this. So then because, so we're going to use one, two, three, four, five, six. So the one that's all the way, now that we're going the same, how we went from right to left, we're going to start with the cord that's all the way to the right. So we're just going to do six. So wherever you count, one, two, three, four, five, six. When you count six, that's the, the one all the way to the right because we're doing it in the middle. And then the other side, we'll do the other six. So now, once again, we grab with the right hand um, the working cord, and then we start working with the left hand. So then over, we pull, and then the same one over, and then we pull. Just like this. Now the second one. So you kind of like eyeball it where you kind of want um, the string to go. Remember, this is kind of like our steering wheel, this base course. So wherever you want the knots to go, this is where you have to place and keep this one steady so that the knots can move in that direction. So now we're grabbing the second one. We pull back with the same one. It goes over and through the loop. Just like this. Now we grab the next one over the base cord. Just like this. And then again over and through the loop. And then we pull back. I'm kind of shaping it to where I want them to go. Two more knots, all the way to the tip, over the base. We pull and then we pull back, and then over the base again, and through the loop. And pull back. And then one more time. over the base and pull until we reach the other knot 
over the base again and through the loop. So now we have one side, just like this. So now I'm going to do the second, just how we did two, two lines up here, we're going to do two lines on the bottom as well. So we'll count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, wherever six falls, that's where we're going to do the next row. So this sixth one will be our base chord. So we're going to start again with the one that's um, the first chord to the left. So the first, through the loop, and the second, so remember when you do the second line, always pull back until the knot is completely tight and close to the first row. And then again. Two more knots, two more strings. Back, one more time. Back, and then the last one. Over the base. You pull back over the base through the loop. You pull all the way and then back. Just like this. So now we've created one side of our little X. So now I'm going to move to the other side. So we're going to start with this first one as our base. That's the first one. Over, pull. So remember, you might not get the hang of it on your first time, but I mean, the beauty of macrame is that you can always undo and redo how many times you want, and you can just go at your own pace. So now the second line, we're going to use the cord that's all the way to the left. We're going to hold it with our right with our right hand, and the following one we'll use as our first working cord. So it's going to go over the base. We pull back to make it nice and tight. We, with the same cord, it's going to go over the base through the loop, and then we will pull back. I'll do the same with the other five points. So we pull back, over, loop, and then pull back. Two more, two more chords. Back, over, and then we got to the last one, last chord, all the way to the tip. We hold the end over the base, 
we pull it and then we pull back and with the same one over the base and through the loop we pull until we reach the other knot and then we pull back yay so now we have our first section so now what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be creating the knots for where um, to create kind of like the basket of the wall hanging of the plant hanger. So I'm going to put this up here just so everybody can see better. So we're going to grab, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to leave the two first cords on the right out and we're going to use the four other cords that are kind of like nearing the center of the of these little knots and then the same thing with the right we'll leave the two last cords all the way that are in the corner out and then we're going to work with the four cords that are in the middle first so what we're going to do is that we're going to do um we're going to leave a space that's uh 16 um fingers long so one two three four so here right down here we're going to create our first um square knot so using we're going to put these aside and then we're going to use these four so we're going to use the two in the middle as the base and then the two on the side as the as the working cords so I'm just gonna create the first half and then the second. Now I have one. And I'm gonna do the same with the other four cords that are in the middle, leaving these two on the side without touching. So right where I did this knot, I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna knot. My square knot, make sure it's equal. So right here. No. I'm going to do the same thing. So So now the cords that I left on the sides, I'm going to use these now. So, so I'm going to use these two cords and then these two cords to create um, my next square knot. So this knot is going to be five fingers away from the first knot. So I'm using the first four strings to create the next knot and then I'm leaving these two out. So two five fingers apart, so right here. And then I'll do the same with the other side that oh my god it's still not equal. So now the same thing. I'll use the two outer ones with the next two and then five fingers apart. I'm going to create the next knot. Just like this. So I did 16 fingers from the first knots to here. Now I did five 
And now I'm going to do, I'm going to join these together just like this. And then I'm going to use these two working cords from these knots. Because now I'm going to attach these two together to create the next knot. So then for these, it'll be eight fingers apart. So then we have it like this. And now we're going to join them like this. So these in the middle are going to be the working cords and the ones on each side are going to be our um, working cords. And the ones in the middle are going to be the base ones. So we're going to do eight fingers apart and just the same. We're going to do a square knot. Just one square knot. So how, let me see the question, how far did you go before you made square knots? So for the first one, I did 16 fingers, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, and then I did the first square knots. And then for the second ones, I did 5 fingers, 5 fingers spacing, and then for the next square knot, I, I'm doing 8 fingers. So let me double check and see that I have eight. So I'm going to do that with the front, just like this. So now I'm, I'm attaching these together and then I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip. The, so I started with the front, just like this, and now I'm going to flip the plant hanger around, and then I'm going to attach the back ones. So you'll see that these in the middle aren't attached, so I'll use those as a base cord, and wherever I did the other knots, then I'll do this one. So right here. I'll do the back ones. So then, let me explain it again. So I did 16. Let me hold this up a little bit. So I did 16 from the knot right here where it ended to, um, to the first square knot. And then from the first square knot to the second one, I did five fingers. And then from the second to the third square knot, I did eight fingers apart. And then I did one in the front connecting these two. And then I flipped it over and did a square knot in the back connecting these two on the top that haven't been connected. So let me see how I can make it. A little bit easier. I just have a lot of space here. Um, okay, so from here to so from here to here is 16. From here to here is 5, and here to here is 8. So what I did with the third knot is that I connected these two right here this is the last knot and then I flipped it over and I connected the knots in the back and created the square knots so so I did three Kind of like three rows. One, two, and three. So let me know if you don't understand so I can explain it again. Mm. 
Yeah, to remove continue. Well, now what we're going to do is that we're going to attach all the road all the cords together by creating a um wrap knot. So I'm going to leave kind of like three fingers from the last um square knot and I'll create the wrap knot. So what we're going to do is that just how we did with the um, so we're going to grab one of our cords that is one yard long, which is the last ones that we have. We'll only grab one. So just how we did with the string, we're going to fold it, leaving maybe like five fingers on one side and then the rest on the other side. So we're going to put it in front of your of your of all your cords with the loop facing up, just like this. So the cord that has the most rope is going to go on the right and then the one with the little rope is going to go on the left. So you're just going to hold it and then wrap it around. And wrap it around all your strings. So we're going to do this until you've reached the end of the cord or, um, or the loop like maybe like one finger before the loop ends. So I think I have one more. And then right here, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to loop it through here. And then I'm going to pull the cord up to keep it in place. Just like this. And now I'm going to use the scissors to cut the leftover strings that we have here. One here and then one here. And then while you're at it, you can also cut the strings that are in the back sticking out of your of your ring. Okay. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to create our second half of our um, of our plant hanger. So let me just place this up here. So let's see where. Sorry guys, this 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 plant hanger is super long and I have to fold it over the the racks so um, everybody can see. So now we're going to create three separate groups with four chords each. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one in the back with four chords. So we're going to be doing the next knot we're going to be doing is a half square knot. So we're going to be grabbing four chords, which is for group number one. The outer ones are going to be your working cords, and then the middle ones are going to be your base cords. So just like we did with the square knot, we're going to be creating, we're going to start with the left working cord over the base, forming a four, then the right goes over the left working cord through the back, and then through the loop. And then we're going to tighten it until it reaches the top. So instead of coming back, we're going to do the same step over and over again. So first we're going to do it on five times. So this is one, now again, two, three, four, and five. So once, once we reach five, we end it here. What we're going to do is going to flip it over and then start again. So this end is going to flip over and now we start again. We're going to do 30 of these. So now we have five. So six. So every five knots, we're going to um, twirl it with our hands. Um, so it's seven. 
eight, nine, and ten. And now we end it here, and now we're going to flip it. Just so we can create, even though this knot already does the spiral, we're just um, flipping it so that it can be a little bit more um, cohesive and, and tighter. So now I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and again, flip it. So halfway there, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then move it with the hands, then 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then we move it again, flip it, and then 26, 27, 28, 29, and then 30. And then we flip it again. So now we have 30 um, half square knots. So now we're going to move to the other side. So let me just flip this around so I don't have to move the other way. We're going to grab four more cords that are near each other. And we're going to create the next group of um, half square notes. So exactly what we did on this side is what we will be doing on this side. So the outer ones are our working cords, the middle ones are the base cords. We do a four over behind and then we loop and move it all the way up. So remember your base cords are you only move them when you want to move the knot up and set it in place. Other than that, you don't really do anything else with it. Um, then again, same step all the way. Shoot. So the way that you, if you lose count of how many knots you've done, you just count these little horizontal lines. These little ones that are right here, you just count them, and that's how many knots you've created. So this is two, one, two, three. Four, five, then we flip it with our hand, just like this, and then again, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I flip again. So every five, we're going to do this. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You flip it. Again, and then five more. Six, seven, eight, 
So once again, oops, working cords on the side. Let's put this little extra piece of thread. This is one. So normally I wouldn't do this um, on the rack and have it like hang like this. I would just, um, I would definitely recommend putting a hook up if you're doing something this large. Um, just putting a hook higher up on your wall and um, and just getting standing on a stepping stool. then we flip again. So now we want to make sure that we have two in the front, two of these little um, groups in the front, and then one at the end. So let me attach these to so here so it's easier to manage. So now that we have our three sections, so yeah, make sure that the front has two groups in the front and then one in the back. And just how we did with, um, with the previous section, what we will be doing is that just exactly the same. We're going to leave two cords without touching first. We're going to use the next four. So we're going to leave 16. 16 finger space and then we'll make our square knot our first square knot sure And then the same with here. We leave two without touching, and then we'll do the next four. So right next to this one, we'll do the next square knot. So now we're going to use 
the first two chords and then the other two that are next to it and we're going to create the next knot. So this one will be five fingers, five fingers space right here. So remember, when you're going to do a square knot, you do the first side first, and without going the opposite way to close the square knot, you first want to make sure that this is the exact space that you want, that way you can move up and down before you lock the knot in place. And now that you know that, okay, it's perfectly where you want it to go, now you go the reverse way to close the knot and set it in place. So now let me move this up a little bit so we can see better. So what I have done now is create two groups. So now I'm going to close these together just like this. And when I close them, the ones in the middle are going to be the working cords and then the ones right next to it are going to be, sorry, these are going to be the base chords, the ones in the middle, and then the other ones are going to be the working chords. So we're going to do it eight fingers, eight fingers space. So let's see. One, two, one, two, one, two. And now we're going to close it just like this. So I close these together, and then I did one, two, three, four, and now we're going to flip your, you're going to flip your piece, and then you're going to do the same with the ones um, in the back. So you're going to put these together, and then the ones in the middle are going to be your base cords, and the one on each side is going to be your working cord. How far from the end of half square not to square? Um, what do you mean? Sorry guys, I'm reading a question. <laughs> How far down from end of square not to square not? So we have, so wait, first we did 16 space from the top to the first square knot. Then to the second square knot, we did five space. And then to the last square knot, we did eight finger space. Is that what you're asking? I'm a little bit of head, like the video. So it'll probably take you a little bit to get what I'm saying. But let me do the last square knot while I wait for your response. So this back one, you're just going to do the square knot where you did the one in the front. So wherever the, the one in the front fell is where you'll do the one in the back. Because you want them to be um, equal. just like this. Oops, a little bit higher. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, wherever you did the front one, you'll do the back. We're going to flip it over again. And then just how we did and the top, we're going to now do the wrap knot. So we're going to grab our last cord, measuring one yard, and then we're just going to do it three fingers down. Remember, one side measures like five fingers, five finger space here, and then the one with the most cord goes on the right, and the one with the, the end goes on the left. So you'll put it right in front of 
your cords and with your right cord you're going to move around this. So you're going to wrap all these cords. Wrap, wrap, wrap until you've either run out of cord or you reach the end of your loop. So just like this. I think that's enough. Now I'm going to loop this end inside this loop and then with the little piece of cord that was left over I'm going to pull it up and then it's going to hide underneath the wrap knot. With this type of cord it's really easy and most of the time it's going to hide underneath your the wrap knot that you've created, but with the other cotton cord that we that we that we've used in the past um, episodes, not always is it gonna hide underneath the underneath the cord. But as long as you've put the end inside the loop and it's kind of tight, then that is um good enough with the other cord. So now you've created your super long <laughs> double plant hanger. So let's see, let me put this in here. So just like this, with my fake plants. <laughs> okay, and now we are done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, this episode. I know it was a little bit complicated since this is a little bit too long and the spacing that I have isn't that big. But definitely if you have any more questions, let me know and I'll try to explain it um, a little bit more. Uh, please follow me on Instagram at shophellachiki and tag your creations with Chiki Studios. Thank you so much again for, um, for joining in and see you in the next episode.